What is up guys, you got Not The Worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and today we're taking a look at the patch notes for August 9th. We have uh, quite a few exciting events that are going on this week, which is great. You can see in the table of contents, there's some tweaks to some different classes, uh, some upgrades and things like that for some, and just some changes for others. Uh, so let's get in and take a look. We'll start off with those events. And first up, you may be like, oh, we already have the Rocking Horse Full of Dreams event. Well, it's uh, been extended. That's going to run until August 30th now, um, so that you can still get your free Dream Horse. It looks like a lot of people were coming into the game late or maybe made some mistakes and didn't necessarily claim it once they were removed um, a few uh, patches back so they decided to bring that back in for players that didn't um, I can tell you just between like reading reddit and then like different discords and stuff a lot of people were putting tickets in to then still get it uh, because they'd missed it for one reason or another which they were then acquiescing however it makes more sense let's just extend it until the end of the month so everybody can get it so that's pretty cool of them for sure and moving on to the next one, we have a little rabbit event here. Rabbits escaped from the Sea Palace with a rare goodie bag. It's in Finto Farm Warehouse. So uh, you can head on over to Finto. Uh, got a little uh, Finto Farm no diddly to do there. Get a goodie bag. It's got some RNG rewards for you there. Uh, big one here. We've got double drop on Vel and Garmoth. The Garmoth uh, spawns are now working or supposed to be working. So that he'll spawn twice a day and you do those weeklies. You're going to get double the rewards uh, during this event, which is going until the 23rd of August. Uh, from Garmoth, and you'll have double chance to get a Vel's heart out of the uh, Vel's bundle there. So not necessarily double on it, but double the chance to obtain double rewards, double across everything, double the fun, right? Uh, next up, just log in. They're going to give you some extra dice for the Black Spirit Adventure uh, event one that's on there. So you'll get some turtle and bunny dice to go along with it. We've got a summer hot time event going on, 200% skill XP, 400% combat XP. Notably, there's not a drop rate. Uh, event tied in with this but still pretty nice for those trying to grind up a little bit we've got a guild bonus on completing guild missions so you get some additional rewards uh, for doing that and then of course we've got login rewards that have been reset because the previous ones ended and it just makes sense and finally we have the safeguard your crystals event extended until august 16th an extra week this is pretty nice if you want to try out some of the new zones that we'll talk about in a bit which uh, would be the new thornwood decky lantern version and same for Tauros. So that is it for the events. Before we jump into the rest of the updates, did want to just mention we do have until August 16th a creator content uh, sponsorship deal uh, from Pearl Abyss. They are hooking me up with a percentage of A coin sales or rather pearls. So if you are on the non Steam version and you want to help your boy out, uh, when you are purchasing your A-Coin to get your pearls, you punch in creator code NTW on there, and uh, that does help me out quite a bit. If you were going to buy the pearls anyways, why not type that in and uh, send a little bit my way instead of uh, PA? Uh, it does help support the stream, and, and I do appreciate anybody that wants to use that, so definitely consider it. If not, no big deal. I hate you, but it's not a big deal. So, Anyhow, moving into the rest of the updates for class changes, uh, they note that today's uh, patch brings about adjustments to certain skills and skill add-ons that affect the resource consumption of targets. They're specifically talking... Uh, about things like the MP drain skills uh, that certain classes have that can be pretty cumbersome. Uh, so you can see for Ranger, it was removed. The reduction effect was entirely removed altogether. And then we get a reduction for Musa and Maywas, where the effect on hit was minus 50 before is now going to be minus 10 uh, on it. So those are scaled down a little bit as uh, it was kind of annoying playing around that, depending on the player's MP setup. Next up, we have uh, Warrior, and for Succession Warrior, they've improved not only the existing Prime Solar Flare takedown combo, but made Prime Evasion combo more smoothly into counter, thus allowing for even greater debuff-inducing combos. In addition, we improved the Guard skill, which once had Warriors block consecutively for quite some time in order to stack all the AP, all DP increase effect to now stack its buff at faster speeds, which we hope will encourage more Warriors to remain sturdy bulwarks in the front lines. So all you sturdy bulwarks, get hard and get out there. Sork, uh, for Awakening Sorceress, we made adjustments to skills that deal significantly less damage in PvE versus the amount of time it took to cast said skills in hopes to encourage their use as opposed to the more popular violation or swirling damage. Karshan's Nightmare was also dealing damage differently based on the location of the target, so we made the skill now deal the same damage regardless of the attack area. We also improved the skill's cast time to make it easier to utilize in PvE combos, which we hope will empower Sorceress Adventures to dish out even greater amounts of damage. Next up for Maywa and Succession Mayo specifically, we aim to further build upon her hit and run gameplay style, which was why in a previous patch we had added an extra guard gauge damage effect and increased the damage dealt by her skills with her high accuracy, such as red blooming, to really make her play with a one shot, one kill vibe. 
However, we felt that certain skills damage figures were tweaked a bit too high, so we decided to take another look at the damage dealt by Red Blooming and Prime Charge Stub Arrow. While we made further tweaks to what we signif were significantly high levels of damage, we made sure to keep Mewa's momentarily dangerous edge on the battlefield intact with our changes. Striker, we have made improvements to Striker's Somersault and Triple Flying Kick skills by allowing for, the, allowing for the potential of combos that apply all evasion rate reduction along with the floating debuff. So now, especially for Succession, Strikers can open with Prime Wolf's Hunger, Somersault plus Triple Flying Kick combo, or apply a second debuff after other skills by comboing into Somersault and Triple Flying Kick. Next up, we have Lawn. This one looks most interesting to me out of the changes we see this week. Previously, Succession Lawn required some preparation with a Stately Dignity Pendulum Cleaver Dismemberment combo before engaging in PvE. Thus, we decided to make it so that simply using Stately Dignity alone will grant the attack speed buff, thus removing the buff from being applied by Pendulum Cleaver. Hence, Lawns will now only have to use Stately dis uh, Dignity Dismemberment to obtain both attack and movement speed buffs. We also buffed the damage of certain skills with long cast times to bolster her PvE capabilities, and you can see that the case on Pendulum, Blade Dance, Symbidium, and uh, Crescent Barrage as well. For Sage, we focused on improving the Awakening Sage's movements to operate freely around the battlefield. Impaling Flash's previous iteration became rather difficult to use the more opponents that stood on the battlefield, so we changed it into more of a gap-closing charge skill. We also lowered the cooldown for the skill Divine Executioner, thus allowing Awakening Sages to enter uh, and retreat from battle more frequently than before. Um, for Wusa, we have today's patch bringing a huge change for Wusa's Awakening. First off, her signature Awakening skill, Life Lore, gains the Forward Guard buff, along with increased max summonable range. Being that this skill bears such powerful potential, we adjusted the skill Sorry Flower's explosive damage downward. Regardless, we felt the added Forward Guard buff would provide some safety to Wusa's in sticky situations, and look forward to seeing more Wusa's in large skill battles such as Node and Conquest Wars, thanks to her added range. In addition, we made some improvements to a few combos to flow better. This should have some impact on PvE as well, um, as a bit more protection is going to be a little bit nicer at some of the higher and more difficult grind zones where defense actually matters. As far as the damage we're talking about, uh, it went down from uh, 2792 to 2513 for the, the modifier. So a decent chunk, but it's still a pretty powerful hit there. For Megu, the Awakened Megu previously engaged in battle by quickly approaching with Fox Flare Ambush and Hazy Path Twirling Rhapsody, then striking unsuspecting foes. However, learning Core Twirling Rhapsody did not apply the floating debuff instantly, thereby making the skill somewhat underutilized. Therefore, we added the floating debuff to be now applied during attack 1 of Core Twirling Rhapsody. We also added the air attack debuff to the skill, so Megu can now float enemies and deal even greater damage than before. Something not mentioned there, which we do see here, is she also gets uh, her Black Spirit uh, skills, the, uh, was it 10%, 25%, 50% skills. Uh, so we that, see that instituted on Twirling Rhapsody, uh, Twirling Retreat, and they've got little graphics for them too. They all look pretty freaking cool. And Ember Claw Crush uh, for the 50% one there. So they didn't note it there. They also added the Elvia skill if you are grinding with her in Elvia um, Serendia. So you can actually have the Awakening skill available to you. So that's it for class changes. Moving into other content updates, the ocean currents and winds were important elements for adventurers who enjoy a life at sea, especially since the currents acted as routes along the ocean. These were elements that uh, had to be organically addressed depending on the situation during sailing. Uh, basically, they removed this. The currents have been removed. Adventurers setting sail for the first time can easily reach their destination along their desired route. They found that it was going to be more cumbersome in general, so they got rid of it. They also increased the Marnie's Realm to additional monster zones that didn't have it before. So these were now added to Bashams, Desert Nagas, Fogans, Fadis, Gahas, Crescents, Kadri, uh, Trader's Graveyard, which is, uh, I believe that's Soldier's Grave, right? Uh, Prodi Cave, uh, Centaurs, Kratuga, Ash Forest, and Crypt of the Resting Thoughts. They all have uh, Marnie zones now available for them. Uh, the addition, it's obviously been added to the UI, so when you access Marnie, it's in there and explains it to you. Next up, we have the Dekia's Lantern zones that were added today. We have Tauros, or Tunkuta, and Thornwood uh, Fortress as well. Uh, Tauros maintaining a two-man setup here uh, for it. It works the same as the Ash Forest um, zones that did with the Lantern as far as uh, consumption. There's specific areas, uh, you can see a total of six, that you can trigger this, and you're going to stay in one spot and then just uh, kill mobs there can drop up to duo turbo belts doing it that way and then the thornwood has four spots i believe uh looks like four here it might be cut off it was kind of weird to take a picture of thornwood like this and then the zone is down here but it's cut off so pretty sure there's just the four maybe there's one below that um and the picture's just cut off a little bit same idea ominous rings can be dropped up to duo for it uh this place also dumps a lot of kafiris and spirit dust uh and the uh money here is actually insanely good um, this is likely going to be like the number one grind spot 
moving forward unless ominous rings take an absolute plummet which is entirely possible other decade changes we got an ash forest update to make it a little bit easier so the barnas are no longer going to summon uh, the garis that are there then their DK dp was decreased by about four percent which might not sound like a lot but those dudes are pretty tanky and live for a while so taking it down four percent is significant the volkris also get a dp decrease of four percent as well as they're going to spam their nice little aoe much less frequently uh, and it changes so that when they revive it comes revived as a single entity and doesn't split into multiples uh, thereby reducing the amount that are up in your face and hopefully reducing the amount they're spamming aoe's non-stop the rift seed is also going to now be set to respond every two minutes as opposed to every two hours and it shortened the summoning cycle of the rift seeds for the garus by about 1.5 times which makes sense if you remove it from the barnus uh, in the first place so that you're still getting a good amount of spawns uh, from that the crimson dragon hp uh Garmoth's HP adjustment was changed. There were some bugs with it before. It's now supposed to have HP based on the number of players there. Um, and you'll also see that with Baby Vel during the event as well, that she's going to be adjusted to that to hopefully prevent despawning later on in the week, which makes sense because most people have already done it. They talk about the safeguarding crystals, which we already covered. Um, they've got uh, some quest updates and things like that. More specifically, that's relevant. The Narchillion gear quest, it was changed on how you can actually get this. So uh, before you had to hand over Pen Naru gear to Fugar um, for this quest completion. And now you can just talk to him and get it. You don't have to hand over Pen Naru gear at all to actually do that. So it's going to make access for Narchillion gear a lot easier and a little more straightforward for most players. I think in the case of Seasons, it's fairly rare you run that stuff. You typically jump right into your Tuvala and get going with that. There's also a tweak to the Book of Margahun where it needed a Fruit of Enchantment. It's now 10 of any type of fruit uh, for it, so you don't have to try and wait on those enchantments if you don't have access to farming them or whatever because everybody's using them for uh, horses at the moment. T10 horses use those. Uh, we have a quick note on today's Node and Conquest War update. It's increased the rewards for those, and the tax rate was also adjusted so that guilds can obtain more funds when they win in Node War and Conquest War. Starting with the reward increase for Node and Conquest War, they're going to work quickly to improve PvP-related content by reviewing and reflecting on feedback as much as possible. So we'll see what kind of changes that brings, but there's the institution for those updates. And that covers uh, most everything other than some issue fixes and tweaks. So let's jump on over and check out the Pearl Shop for this week, starting off with a new costume. And uh, this is one of the costumes I've liked the most in quite a while on release. Um, it is the Orzeka's Rose, uh, which looks like this. It's available for which uh, Megu, Wusa, and Sork, and it ha they actually have screens for uh, each class, so you can kind of see the interaction with it. This looks pretty dope. I'm a fan. Not upset by this at all. Uh, pretty cool looking costume. Not wild about it in white, but you know, whatever. So, to each their own. There are some uh, bundles for the 10,000 and 20,000 pearls, so make sure when you're purchasing those, you use code NTW at checkout to hook your boy up uh, with a little bit there. Just uh, punch that in if you're not on the Steam client. NTW. And uh, if you want to get the 10,000 Pearl, it's got a bonus on it. Three-day Blessing of Old Moon, a Mystical Cronstone bundle, and a 10% discount coupon. The 20,000 similarly has a seven-day uh, Blessing of Old Moon, a rare Cronstone bundle, and a 20% discount coupon. So pick those up now. Other than that, not a ton of stuff, but you know, to the surprise of no one, there's a six Mystical Premium Outfit bundle. So you get six of those uh, at a slightly discounted rate, and then they're also going to give you six Mystical Cronstone bundles with it, and then a rare Cronstone bundle as well. And then a 10% apparel coupon. Uh, then you've got a 2 plus 1 Wizard Ghost Fee Pack available. So get you three of those for the price of two. Mount XP Pack on sale, 720 pearls. It's got the 10 of those XP scrolls as well as five Celerity Drafts, five Corsair's Aura, and five of Laura's T. We've got a Weekly Enhancement Pack, 720 pearls. It's 20 Artisans, five Mass Appear Magic, and 20 Memory Fragments. Uh, then we have uh, Storage stable and lodging all 30 percent off and then the weekly outfit uh on sale i like that they're continuing to have multiples instead of just one 27 20 pearls for either the tamer nightcap valkyrie arendo musa gold scale or uh, maywa lunar blue outfit sets so those uh, should hopefully get a decent amount sold if you're trying to pre-order some costumes get yourself some crons so there you have it for this week's patch notes and pearl shop let me know what you guys think about what's going on uh, in the comments down below. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you get notifications when new videos go live. And if you'd like to catch me playing live, there's a link to my Twitch page in the description down below. Jump on over there, drop a follow so you get notifications for that as well. With that said, that's going to be it for this one. want to thank everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.